Hello, and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. I'm Becky, and uh, this is my house of sewing. This is where we talk about all things thread and needle. Um, mostly cross-stitch and quilting, um, but you never know. I might throw something else in. Um, today, it's been a couple weeks since my last, um, uh, I guess, episode or vlog or video blog whatever you would like to call it um i thought i would tell you a little bit about what i have in the hopper as it were going on right now and a lot of people because it's the beginning of the year um are kind of going through their whips ron let's whip and they're having what we fondly refer to as a whip parade and um, uh, I have a, I have fairly, uh, you know, a nice amount of projects. I don't have 18 projects. I don't have 46 projects, which some of my fellow floss tubers do have. But I thought what would be fun and what's kind of on my mind right now is kind of a review of what I've done. Um, Kind of as I'm thinking about how I want to use um, YouTube, um, what what what's the purpose of me doing these? Why do I like it so much? Um, uh, it's it's not just because of Ron. You know, Ron's got a big part of it. Um, and if you're new here, Ron and Connie are my neighbors, um, and they watch me regularly and harass me when I do not do an episode. I am apparently their only entertainment. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, they've been great encouragers and they have a drinking game involved. So whenever I say Ron or Connie, um, they like to have a little drink. So I, I offer that game to you as well. Um, it does not have to be alcoholic. Lord knows I'm allergic to alcohol. Very sad. So if you want to see me turn more red than I am and start sneezing, serve me up some alcohol. It's a treat. I am very pretty. Um, I digress. But as I'm kind of thinking about how I want my YouTube channel to look like, what, what does this all mean? blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, let me kind of go through what I have done. I, I work a full-time job. Um, I, I help take care of, uh, family members and I help host some Zoom, uh, stitching groups. So I'm involved in a lot, but it often feels like I don't do a lot. I don't produce a lot. That not that I don't do a lot. I don't produce a lot. I don't finish a lot. And um, it's a slow hobby. And that's not always the point of the cross stitch for me. Um, I really do uh, enjoy it. I enjoy where I can do it, meaning I get to sit on the couch with my husband and my dog and, you know, listen to videos and that kind of stuff. And um, I like the sound, as I've said before, of the needle through and the thread through the fabric. Um, I think it's neat kind of making a pixelated picture and seeing it come to life. Um, as I do lots of other crafts and making it, I like hearing my beautiful sewing machine, uh, the sound of it going through and, you know, when I need a new needle and things like that. So. I thought I'd share what I'm what I've been doing in the last two weeks, but also what I have done since essentially October 2021. That's kind of when I started um, the YouTube channel. It was with a, a ginormous finish that I was very proud of. So um, I I'll bring her out again and uh, reminisce. And then. I do have a lot of finished projects that are not fully finished projects, so they're called only FOs. So we're going to have an FO parade, as it were. 
And then, you know, the usual haul and yada, yada, yada. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Oh, and a funny little story about haul. Um, I do want to uh, share some family, um, some old family finishes, um, but I, I don't think I'll get to that this week. Um, I think I'll do that at the next episode as well. Um, but it's kind of fun to show some old things, especially because I have them scattered throughout my house, not just in my sewing room, um, I bet I get to look at them every day and kind of fondly, um, be nostalgic about my family members and, uh, what it means to me to come from such a long line of, um, people who found creative outlets to be super important and pass that down. Um, I'm so lucky to have had so many people in my life that, um, took time to show me how to craft, uh, and whether we really knew exactly what it meant to us as far as mental health wise or having that kind of outlet, that it was always important to everyone in my family. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just really cool. Very cool. Come from very talented people. Um, and I, I don't know, I just think it's neat. Okay, I digress. All right, let's talk about what I've been doing. Um, so, as you know, I'm part of Wednesday Stitchers, and today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2023, which just, it doesn't seem possible, but it is. That, that's the real date. I'm not making it up. Um, so, uh, Wednesday Stitchers makes up a group that, um, it's, it's fairly open to anyone, as most uh, sewing groups are. Friends invite friends, invite friends. Um, but it was originally, as I grew up as a child, it was um, my mom and my grandmother um, and people of that gen those two generations, either friends or relatives, that got together every Wednesday and they basically had a luncheon and stitched together they would rotate homes um, every Wednesday. And again, this literally happened for <laughs> like 18 years of my initial childhood. Um, I guess starting in the 18, uh, 1980s is when it really kind of came into play, um, where my grandmother and my mom and um, again, several uh, friends and family who were working at cross-stitch stores and such like that. So, um, it had long since disbanded and honestly, all of my grandmother's generations have um, passed on um, and uh, we hadn't revived it until 2020 when the pandemic was hitting and I needed to take some vacation and my mom's like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, honestly, I would just love to get together with you and Aunt Mary Lou and just kind of stitch on Zoom, have a Zoom meetup and do some cross stitching. And when I did that, I surprised my mom with um, an old family friend, Maureen, and uh, I snuck her in and surprised my mom and single-handedly revived Wednesday Stitchers. So uh, my mom got all excited and started inviting all her old quilting buddies and so now we have a great group and I've invited some friends and other family members have gotten involved. Um, so it's, you know, it's fun. So we do that um, Wednesday mornings-ish, kind of around the same time, kind of we usually break, um, usually meet in the mornings and then break whenever somebody's hungry <laughs> um, and go from there. And along this journey, as I've blabbed about it at work, my uh, boss told me I needed to meet somebody that was uh, shopping at our store. Her husband was shopping and she was stitching. And uh, he brought me over, look, look what she's doing. And then like I immediately honed in and we started talking a language that my boss had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> he slowly backed away. 
Um, and Kathy, who I met, um, had actually uh, invited me to a sewing group that's local that meets in person, um, which was super exciting um, because I watch some YouTubers that are local to the Charlotte area-ish, in the greater Charlotte area, and um, I knew that one of those ladies uh, meets at a in a South Carolina group, and I was like, is it? Do you, do you meet with Nicole's group? <laughs> and she said, well, yes, yes we do. And so um, that ensued a little bit of excitement and giddiness. Um, and I've been super excited to get to know all these ladies and I consequently invited another friend. You know, that's how like, these things go. Um, but yeah, it's just camaraderie is fantastic and um, Everyone stitches a little different things, but everyone has the same love of it, and it's fun. Neat. <laughs> I was like, where am I going with this? I wanted to talk about th that um, sewing group in South Carolina because we have um, we had joined up together for one of the 24 hours of cross-stitch. There's another YouTuber out there um, that I apologize I do not watch, um, and I don't remember her name. But uh, I believe it was a mother-daughter team, and they have created this quarterly event that is 24 hours of cross-stitch. And so you spend a weekend, and you attempt to spend 24 hours in that weekend of stitching. Just kind of burning through some whips, or some people use it as a, a time to start a new project, or something like that. So we decided to Zoom on a Friday night kind of kick off our um, 24 hours of cross stitch. And another one of the stitchers uh, suggested that maybe we start, because it was uh, the new year for uh, Chinese New Year and uh, the year of the rabbit, that maybe we start a uh, sew along um, in, in a rabbit theme of some sort. So that's where we are. And I believe I talked a little bit about this last time, and so I apologize if I'm dragging on about it but um so I've gotten that kind of started and um, let me show it to you of course oh sorry I had to bend over of course I had to make a new bag for it and I know I have rabbit fabric here somewhere but I couldn't find it but I really like this fabric and let me just show it to you look how cute that is okay so dirty on the floor so it's hexagons and it's owls now technically owls eat rabbits but we'll, we'll go with it it's a cute bag so I made this bag um, it's got a little apple inside orange inside and this is gonna hold my year of the rabbit project um, I am starting with a little tiny one which this is what I think I shared yesterday uh, last week last time this is Prairie Schooler. Let me get a little closer. You can see that chart was a whole whopping dollar in 1997. These days it would probably be like five dollars, I guess, for a little card like this. Um, so this again is the Spring Cleaning Fairy. She's riding her dust bunny. She's adorable. Uh, so this is roughly about a two by three kind of scenario. It has all these wonderful threads. Yes, that's 14 threads there for a little tiny thing. But it's Prairie Schooler. Prairie Schooler is a beloved, um, a beloved company that's still around today. So that's fun. So what I start, what I bought was um, some fox and rabbit, um, which is a design and uh, linen dyeing company. I bought their fabric, and this is called flannel flower. It's 32 count. See, isn't that pretty modeling? Okay. So Ron, you'll see that this is a little ghosting. You see, like kind of blends in that 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 color that's her mop broom 
I started this um, at my stitching group on uh, Sunday and I just did the mop part and it took me two hours to do that. Just that little bit. Now granted a lot of that was unstitching as much as I was stitching um, but yeah it was really hard because it's very similar color to the material and um, as you can see I did not give myself much margin so this is clearly going to be a great little pillow. It's only about an inch from the edge which ideally you'd want two inches so that you can do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, so when I got home, I wanted to keep stitching a little bit. And so here's the thing, it's like I really enjoy stitching this and I'm trying to save it so that, you know, I can stitch along with my friends. Uh, so I did the rest of that in about two hours as well. So I uh, got, I don't know what this is, maybe it's a, a fat eighth of material. I, I do need to uh, sew it up on the sides so that I don't have so much fraying. But um, my mother-in-law likes rabbits because my son, my, my son, my husband uh, had a pet rabbit at one time. So rabbits are a fond uh, memory in the foster family. And I made her a rabbit and I also got this uh, little guy. Um, and this is probably a preview of uh, some of my F.O. parade. And I'd already done him. And I collect pigs. So it's not like I wanted a lot of a lot more rabbits around. So um, using the fox and rabbit fabric. God, look how pretty that modeling is. It's just so pretty. Oh, I'm showing you the back too. It's still pretty on this side. Um... So using the fox and rabbit material is kind of my uh, staying in line with the project. Because the other part of what I'm going to do on this fabric is this cute little guy from Teresa Kogut. It's a black and white photo, so I apologize. But this is Wilbur. Look how cute he is. And I'm thinking that I might not do the, the black border around it and might just do him. I haven't decided yet. Um, so I'm going to do him on the bottom half of this after I'm done with, with my fairy. And probably do it along this side so I can get some of that modeling up, up, up above him. Or maybe, maybe like this. See, so that modeling... I can do him in that little clear area. That's what I'm thinking. I have the threads coming, so next time I'll be able to show those to you. I'll have them all ready and prepped because I think that's the fun part. Um, so that's my hashtag Project Rabbit SAL. Oh, Ron, do you know what SAL means? That's a sew along. So a sow is a sew along. Oh, let me get my threads in here. Let me stop being disheveled. The other thing you guys know I was trying to be working on, trying to be working on, that I want to continue to work on is um, Mrs. Campbell. Um, I don't have a picture of her, sorry. Um, but she's a hands across the sea. She's a Scottish sampler. And Mrs. Campbell was um, the needle arts teacher of young ladies um, back in the 1800s. And uh, this was her class piece. The phrase on the inside of it that I haven't gotten to yet um, says, keep your work clean and pay attention to it. Um, this is where I'm at so far. I had another alphabet in there. Sorry, I've got my thread in there. But this is to remind me about what I want to talk about. Oh, let me move this off to the side so you can kind of see where I am. Oh, I was doing a waist knot. All right, so I had a D in there. Do you kind of see? 
Do you see where the D was? That's right. I got all the way around to like the last part of the D and I realized I was down a whole stitch. I was down a whole row. So I was not, the bottom was not lined up with the alphabet. So I discovered that this morning starting with stitching and I, I consequently got frustrated and set it down and just chatted for a little bit. And then I picked it up and I unpicked it. Um, I have this really long needle in here. Um, um, again, can you see? This is a, a beading needle. There's uh, several stitchers that love stitching on four, uh, 52 and 56 count uh, linen. This is 46 count tabby cat linen. I believe it's creme brulee. But I wanted just to compare, I believe this is 36 here. So see how that, that linen is? Let's see if I can get closer, get a good picture. See, that's a nice, it's a tighter weave, but you can still kind of see the, the bulk of the, the um, linen again and let's see if I can get on this side that's not as wrinkly do you see how tight that is it, it's really it's really tight now a lot of people that are, are stitching on 46 count will use a 28 count needle I was I was struggling and I'm using the hundred and threes which are silks and they come on these lovely bobbins. Look at these pretty colors. And then this is my favorite tray right here. Look at all those pretty colors. Um, but they have such nice luster to them. Um, I, again, I'm really struggling through this. This is not an easy project for me. It takes a lot of concentration and a lot of unpicking. Cause I wanna I want Mrs. Campbell to be proud of me. I wanna I wanna keep my work clean and pay attention to it. So when I ordered the um, threads for my prairie schooler, um, I went ahead and uh, bought some beading needles just to see because again um, it is Jean, who's the owner of the Attic Needle Workshop in Mesa, Arizona, she recommends using a beading needle for the higher counts. So I decided to try it and see, and it is easier. Um, I can, I'm obviously still making mistakes, but it does help um, just glide through the, the holes of the linen easier without making a big hole. And then also kind of, because it's a little sharper, it's, um, I don't know, I'm just, I'm finding it easier. Um, so those are the two things I've been working on and uh, quite enjoying them. So right now, let's, in no particular order, start with the whip parade, or I guess the finish parade, the finished object parade. Parade, F O parade. So I wanted to start with the one that started it all, as it were. And my husband just came home from a trip, so my dog may start barking, but she's asleep in in here, so I don't know. Look at this bad boy. You can tell it's taking up all my screen. So this is a Mariah Blackburn. Uh, design and I was familiar with her because I did um I did I did um my wedding sampler for that and there he is <laughs> fresh from Germany Braun get ready for your liquor I'm not sure if he brought any for you but I think he did okay I digress so um, I wanted, um, when the pandemic hit, I was really um, kind of bitter. 
everyone was talking about how much time they were having at home and doing all these fun projects. And I just wanted a pandemic project, but I still had to work. I didn't get to stay home. So this took me a while and uh, you may be able to see up close right here. I got ha three quarters of the way done before I realized I had started too high on my fabric. <laughs> dun dun dun. So I um, bought another piece of fabric and just did that top part and sewed it together. Which, I mean, if there's anything that represents the pandemic better, I, I don't know what it would be. That <laughs> it was a little messed up. Just like my pandemic piece. <laughs> um, but I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, it looks beautiful in my house. Um, that's really what spurred me back on, uh, on to um, cross-stitching. I don't know what order this is in, but I believe I did this next. Um, this is a free chart from... Hello from Liz Matthews, one of my favorite designers. And I just picked some stash that I'm sure is from the 1990s um, that my mother had passed on to me. And I p picked a favorite color and whipped that up. And I love thistles. I think they're so pretty. I should have probably done it in purple, but I didn't. I don't know if you can see my, my threads behind there but I really like it I need to finish that into something um, let's see I know I know everyone remembers this journey with me also a uh, hello from Liz Matthews this is called token of fall unknown fabric again I'm pretty sure this is 36 count though This was a um, an exclusive for Acorns and Threads, a needle workshop in Portland, Oregon, which I hope one day I get to go to. Also, <laughs> hello from Liz Matthews. Can you can you see the things I've completed are from Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, here are two that are not so. This is one from Jean Farish. You guys remember Roxy. Roxy is a modern interpretation of a sampler that Jean owns. And she did a lot of specialty stitches in the border. The strawberries are, are often uh, different stitches and this was in conversation with what would Roxana have used as a, a young woman because most samplers were done by children or young adults and usually women um, and you know back back in the 1800s there weren't a lot of color choices like there are now and would a young woman um, what would she have chosen in this day and age and I really 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 love the sentiment so when I am dead and in my grave and all my bones are rotten when this you see remember me or I shall be forgotten and I modified this to have a uh, wax saw in it and this sampler was wrought by Becky Pelly Foster which is me um, I, I changed some of those things around because um, I wanted it to be mine and it wasn't an exact interpretation anyway um, I need to frame this it's a nice like 16 by 21 size and I know this was 
I want to say this is Legacy Linens, and this is like a 32 count, and it's, um, now I'm trying to think of the name. I want to say it's like Vanilla Sugar Cake or something like that. Um, I, I really enjoyed working on this. I really like those satin stitches. I'm sure there's plenty of mistakes in it. But there's some Algerian eyelets there. Some long arm stitches. And this came out as a kit um, and in sets. So like every month you would get a new section. I did not end it on time. I think this took me about eight months to do. So I probably finished this in 2022. Oh no, no, I have the date in there. 2021. Look at me go. 2021. My mom did this with me. I don't know if she's got hers done yet. Connie. Connie, my mother, not Connie Peterson. Um, here's, I already showed him, but this came as a little kit, um, with variegated uh, threads and the little pom-poms. Um, I think I'll do the pom-poms differently. The, this time I like I sewed it all the way around and then cut it cut it in the back and flipped it and then stuffed it and put something over top it. I don't mind the finish. Um, I just think I can do better in the corners. But I, I don't hate this. this. This is out and about for me to look at. And you guys know this one, and uh, now, I can't, now I can't remember the name of this designer. But you remember the hands. Because representation matters. And there's more than this white girl stitching out there. And I appreciate all of you. And now I can't remember the name of that either. But if you um, are interested in it, I'd be happy to look it up. Just send me a comment or an email or something. And uh, so those are the things I've done in the last year and a half. Which is not that bad. I mean, I also, I what's behind my gratitude is um, what we have, uh, turns what we have into enough. Behind there is um, my other finish that I showed last time. I didn't throw that one in. But yeah, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the rabbit that I gave to my mother-in-law, eight. That's not too bad um, of a turnout. That's fairly productive for a slower craft. So I'm very proud of myself. Um, so what I wanted to tell, uh, now is kind of switch into some things that I got and some plans. Um, one thing that I have been really wanting to do is the floral motif sampler. And, um, I forget who designed it, but I want to say it's like the Scarlet House or something like that. Um, one of those more well-known brands and um, I've just been thinking about it and thinking about it I can't get away from it but I haven't obviously bought the chart or anything and then I was thinking about um, as I was finding some motifs for M. Bell I had this book out and this book is a different version of the floral motif. As you see on the page, it has all these charts in it. It has like two pages of people, two pages of animals, two pages of, of uh, trees, two pages of houses, um, and then alphabets and letters and all kinds of things. Borders, uh, different motifs like hearts and crowns and Deers and animals and goats and squirrels and rabbits. I think there's rabbits. Hmm. But uh, there's literally 
again, if you think two pages that are set up just like this, of all florals, just like the floral motif sampler. So, guess what I want to do now? Um, I don't know if I want to buy the colors of the floral motif sampler and just kind of pick and choose what I want for each motif. But I will say that Brenda Keys um, has her own key. <laughs> Brenda Keys has her own key. Uh, but anyway, there are, because it is a chart with different symbols, she's already picked out some colors. So since DMC is 60 cent, 66 cents a skein and the other ones are all fancy flosses that are 250 a skein. I might, I might buy some. Might grab some more, maybe when I'm done with my Wilbur and I still have some time, maybe I'll buy a fox and rabbit um, piece of fabric again and whip something up. Um, when I was buying Wilbur, um, and I had been watching some Teresa Kogut, um floss tubes, and everyone raves about Cre Teresa Kogut's, um Patreon account. She does, she's, she's a beautiful folk artist. Uh, she does a lot of painting. She does, she does a lot of patterns for a lot of different things. She makes fabrics. Um, so she's a circus designer as well as an artist and um, a cross stitcher, needle puncher. Um, yeah, she just does a lot of things and I uh, admire her work. But there's nothing that really has made me want to pull the trigger 100% except for this chart that I'm about to show you. I have, and I have to bend it around so it doesn't show another chart, um, but this sampler has always spoken to me, especially this bottom part here. I really like that. And what I think is neat about Teresa's uh, samplers is that you could do any part of this and, you know, turn it into a drum or anything like that. But I think it's so pretty. I love the colors. Um, yeah. So I think I said to myself, just, just buy the chart. You don't need to buy it right now because, again, I also want to do the unicorn, a badger, and whatever that is as well, that tapestry. Um, I haven't bought that fabric yet either, um, but I do have the rest of the threads coming, so that's exciting. Um, so just kind of, you know, having this in the back of my mind, I really, look how pretty that is, even on the cover. Really like that flower. So we'll see. A couple of other charts that come with it are these guys here. I'm not a big fan of doing houses. I know that's weird. It's weird to some. It's not weird to me. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is that I got, um, I'm looking at my table behind me. I don't have it in arm's reach, but I had bought <laughs> some replacement blades for my 60 millimeter rotary cutter. It's an Ulfa brand. Um, and I have the kind that has the automatic release. Um, that's kind of a, a little more ergonomic, but it's also what I like most about it is it's safer because the blade automatically retracts, even though, even if you don't lock it, it's still in a safer position than setting it down and having a, sharp blade ready to cut your finger. Hiya! Um, so I uh, bought some off-brand rotary blades that were compatible with uh, the Alpha brand and um, mostly because the going rate for those blades are like ten dollars each um, and if you cut a lot <laughs> you're gonna need a lot so I got these and um, got them all geared up, changed my blade, and it was just like kind of clunky. It wasn't, there was something just wrong with it. 
And I thought, well, maybe it was my fault because I went ahead and got the the off-brand one. So I went and I looked on Amazon and looked around and you could get 10 blades for about $58, which was kind of the best going rate. And they were Japanese. Uh, so they had all the Japanese lettering to it, but it was Alpha brand. So I went ahead and bought those and I changed my blade and the same thing was happening. I was like, wait a minute. So basically what I had done is I had put the blade assembly back, backwards. I, I, again, I, I just, I put the blade on the right side of the, of the cutter, but I turned the actual screw and um, nut portion of it on backwards, um, which doesn't work well, come to find out. So now I have lots of blades. That's the happy story. That's the end of my story on that one. So as far as plans, I'm going to continue to struggle through Mrs. Campbell. Um, I have, oh, I meant to bring in, mm, sorry. The uh, Dutch sampler, which I think I even wrote down there, the Dutch reproduction sampler. Um, I've been working a little bit on that. Uh, huge ginormous project and I will bring that in next week um, or next time I, I video so that you guys can see it. Um, I have not done much work on it. I have done several hours of work on it but it's not like a, a, a lot of progress because that project is almost three feet long. It's a bed sheet. So it's a really big piece. Um, and I probably need to bring in my inspiration big piece one day. I might do that next time. Okay. Sorry I've been a little rambly, I think, um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Ron, Kanye, I hope I've said your name often enough. Um, uh, all my stitching buddies, I love ya. I can't wait to see you again soon. And um, for all who are viewing, whether I have stitched with you in person or on Zoom or not, um, I'm really grateful for you and I hope you have a great week and um, get some stitching in. And I think what I have come to realize, again with my finish parade, is that I have done a lot of work and I do have some finished objects to be proud of. I do need to continue to finish, finish them, fully finish them. Um, but yeah, even if I don't, I get to, I get to look at them again. Let's look at Roxy again. Isn't that pretty? So I have accomplished a lot in the last year and a half. Um, a lot of finished projects and May that continue in all aspects of all my crafts. Quilting. <laughs> but y'all have a great time doing what you love and get some mental health relaxation and um, peace of mind while doing whatever makes you happiest. Bye.